Hi, Misha here, and we've talked about the cruisers, pretty much all of them, of the Imperial Japanese Navy, all of the battleships, and the majority of the aircraft carriers. So now let's talk about some of Japan's destroyers in World War II. And I have four here from four classes, although three of them are very much related. We have the Fubuki class, and we have the Kajur class, and we have the Asashio class, and the Akazuki class. And we will talk about a little of each one. These weren't the only ships, but they were the larger, more impressive ones in service. Originally, back in the early 1920s, the Japanese Navy hoped to have 144 frontline destroyers. They wanted to use them as part of an element to outclass the U.S. and U.K. navies. They didn't quit get to that number, but when war began in December of 1941, they had 68 first-class A-type destroyers, and they would build around 64 more during the war. But they would take heavy losses for multiple reasons, including Japan's just overall aggressive attitude about destroyers. So that, at the end of the war, only 31 <laughs> were still afloat. So yeah, with that, let's just uh, get into destroyers in Japan. So destroyer as a concept dates back some ways. But it was a bit of a different type of ship <clears throat> in its use and deployment during World War I. After the war, around 1919, your average destroyer was eh, about 1,000 tons, 1,200 tons maybe, although some, including some in the Japanese Navy, were even lighter, as low as 850 tons. And they typically had a main battery of four four-inch guns, give or take, and single mounts, plus maybe a couple of machine guns for air defense, and maybe six or so torpedoes with reloading questionable at best. And they would ha have top speeds of between 32 and 35 knots. So, yeah, they were... Um, very much a smaller warship at this time. But Japan would push that forward. In fact, the Fubuki class here, we'll talk about in a minute, was really considered the first modern destroyer in the world, and really did lead the way and was one of the most advanced of its time and the most heavily armed. Now, the Washington Naval Treaty put considerable restrictions on battleships, cruisers, and even aircraft carriers. And it did put a nominal limit of about 1,400 tons on destroyers. But this wasn't really enforced like the others, because at this time they really didn't see destroyers as a primary threat. So not only did Japan not feel like it had to really care, a lot of the other nations, other signatories, did not either. So, the stage is set. The Washington Naval Treaty does limit Japan's battleships and carriers, and so they decide to focus on smaller ships like destroyers. And thus, we get the Fabukis. Alright, 
Fubuki. Well, maybe. I did my best to guess. Both of these models from Mega Moss are dated 1942. And Asashio and Fubuki are so similar that I have a hard time telling these two apart. Either way, if this is Asashio, what I say about Fubuki still applies. <laughs> this was known as the Special Type Destroyer by the Japanese Navy. And like I said, really was the first modern destroyer and probably the most heavily armed destroyer in the world when it was launched. And it was at least equal to, if not better than, those of the U.S. and England at the time. And this dates back to the Washington Naval Treaty period. Like I said, the Japanese Navy already had plans for destroyers. And they were thinking about having some that were around 40 knots with a small battery of 5-inch guns, so maybe 2 to 3 5-inch guns, and then maybe half a dozen to 8 torpedoes. But after the terms of the Washington Naval Treaty, they revised this. It became the Fubukis. These would have 6 5-inch guns. There would be 3 Twin mounts, one forward, two in the rear. But they would really up their torpedo game, something the Japanese Navy was demanding. They would have three triple launchers, so nine torpedo tubes, and each tube would have a reload, so as many as 18 torpedoes on board. And just because they would also be fitted with two 7.7 millimeter machine guns for air defense. The only thing they really had to give up for this extra everything was speed. The, the top speed would drop to about 38 knots. And the design would be about... 388 and a half feet long, 34, 35 feet wide, and with a crew of between 200 and 250, depending on when we're talking about exactly. In the idea, these were to be either cruiser escorts to work with Japanese cruisers, or in some instances, to be flotilla leaders, kind of mini flagships. So they really were going for multi-role and all of that. And originally, it was supposed to be a, a 2,000 ton standard weight hull, but because of the treaties and everything, they would drop this to about 1,800 tons to kind of at least nod at the requirements of the treaty. And fully loaded, they would be a little over 2,000 tons. Fubuki, the first in the class, was laid down in 1926, and she was commissioned into the fleet in 1928. Interestingly, originally, they were just going to give these hull numbers, like Germany was doing with their destroyers. But this was not popular. Uh, the Japanese Navy was very much on its naming conventions. If you translate the names of their ships, they're very eloquent, very poetic. So to the, to the, sorry, the decision was made, right as Fubuki was coming into service, to give destroyers names. So they ended up naming a lot of these after trees or weather conditions, <laughs> winds and what have you, snowstorms, all kinds of stuff. And there would ultimately be 24 in the class. These would be laid down between 1926 and 1931. And the last one would be commissioned in 
in March of 1933, but the class would change a bit. The first 10 were type 1 here, and these would have guns that could elevate up to about 40 degrees, and the two guns in a turret elevated together. They were joined. When they went to type 2, they went to guns that could elevate separately within a turret and could be elevated up to 75 degrees. This made the Type 2 of the Fubuki class the first destroyers in the world to have dual-purpose guns. 5-inch dual-purpose. Also with the Type 2s, they would enlarge and enlarge and there's a word, <laughs> enlarge the bridge area encompassing more things. They would um, generally do this just adding more coverage. Before that, a lot of things were either open air or covered with canvas. Later, they would start, you know, doing the armor thing, so on and so forth. And then finally, the Type 3, the last four in the class, which some consider a separate class, but eh, would go away from the original four boilers to three more modern boilers. And eventually they would introduce another type of turret that was a little bit lighter. And there were a few other changes, but yeah. So the Japanese Navy was quite happy with their new little destroyer that carried a big gun. But very quickly, they realized that they had some problems. They were a little weak on the longitude. And they were unstable because they were top-heavy. Problems you see with a lot of Japanese cruisers from this era, too. They used it. They used it. There we go. They used welded construction instead of riveting to save on weight. And they had very large bridges. But unfortunately, there was the Fourth Fleet Incident, 1935, and two of the Fubukis would have their bows just broken off. And many others besides would uh, receive stress cracks and other damage from the storms. It was clear that they just didn't have the best sea keeping. So they refit much of the class before World War II, around 1937 for the most part. A lot of them would get the newer type C turret with the 75 degree elevation. It was lighter. They would also shrink the bridge down again and also remove other top weight, including shrinking, cutting down the funnel. They would just try to trim some excess weight here and there. At the same time, they would put more ballast down below and add more fuel. They would take off many of the torpedo reloads. They would remove the original depth charge rails, replacing them with newer, lighter ones, so on and so forth. And while the refit Fubuki types would be heavier at about 2,000 tons standard and up to 2,400 tons fully loaded, again, ballast and fuel, a lot of the weight was lower down, giving them better stability. So this really helped. And these were in service, of course, in World War II. Now, the first to be lost was actually during an accident in 1934, but the majority were still available for World War II. However, two Fubukis were lost December 20th and 21st, when the Japanese were invading Borneo, they were lost to uh, Dutch forces. One was sunk by a submarine, and another was hit by a bomber. From there, they would be used as escorts and, again, kind of attack flotilla leaders. And in... Uh, 1942, 
one would damage the battleship South Dakota. So, I mean, these things were taking on actual battleships. And, and you know, would have maybe done more, but she was driven off by the USS Washington. Fubuki herself here was lost on October 11 during the naval battle of Guadalcanal. But another Fubuki type class would be famous in August of 1943 when she would ram, cut in two, and sink a little boat known as PT-109. And from there, they would continue to serve throughout the war. Originally, their anti-aircraft guns were two 7.7mm machine guns, as I said. These would be upgraded to 13mm, and then an extra pair for a total of four would be added. And then after that, they would start getting the oh-so-wonderful 25mm Type 96 gun, <laughs> for what it's worth. They would also use several different torpedoes over time. They would originally use the Type 8 and the Type 90, and I, I've read some places that say they had the Type 93, the long lance, as well, but don't hold me to that. That would have been a very modern torpedo for this boat. After their refit, their top speed, which had been, like I said, 38 knots, would be down to about 34 knots because they were aging and because they had put on a little bit of weight over time. By war, the Assessio class. While these are very based on the Fubuki, so much so that I can't really tell them apart, Japan would have to wait. In fact, these were not commissioned until 1937. That's because in 1930 the London Naval Treaty put a pretty hard and official limit of 1,850 tons on destroyers, meaning that the Fubukis could kind of squeak in, besides they were pretty much all laid, laid down anyway. But anything greater wouldn't. In fact, the destroyers that Japan would build in the early mid 30s would be a kind of a downgrade in terms of capa uh, capability, range, and all of that. Something they weren't exactly happy with, but they were still trying to nominally go with the treaty system. But already by 1934 or 35, they knew they were going to abrogate anything that would come after the London Naval Treaty, which was set to expire at the end of 1936. So they planned on what would become the Asashio class here. Essentially, they would have the firepower of the Fubukis, but with newer technology, and they would be more stable from the outset. So at the end of the treaty, the first tier would be commissioned into the fleet in the middle of 1937, and the other nine that they would build would be commissioned through 1938 and into the beginning of 1939. These would be the first Japanese destroyers to cross the 2,000 ton mark standard. I believe there were about 2,300 tons up to 25 or so fully laden. They would use the Type C turret. They would have the same six five-inch guns and the three turrets. But they would have a slightly different torpedo layout. One thing I didn't mention, the Type 3 Fubukis had some changes made to make uh, uh, torpedo reloading a little faster and easier. Now, they originally had a total of 18 torpedoes. The uh, Asashios would slightly change that. Instead of having three triple torpedo launchers, they would have two quad launchers. And they would have a total of 16 torpedoes, so a reload for each. They would also have 16 depth charges. And they would be the first destroyer to be fitted from the get-go with a sonar and with the wonderful Type 96 25mm anti-aircraft gun. Woo-hoo. They'd have a slightly smaller crew, around 200 
than the Fubukis, and they would dimensionally be just a little bit smaller, just a tiny amount, like a couple of inches shorter and uh, just a couple of inches narrower, but basically the same dimensions. They would use the three boilers. One thing, thanks to modern construction, they were a little bit faster at 35 knots, and they had a more modern bridge and funnel layout and what have you. So yeah, they were used as uh, escorts for the main combined fleet. They were there at Pearl Harbor. They were also used at Midway and many other engagements besides. By 1944 of the 10, four were left still in service. And uh, throughout the war, they would have a few changes made. For example, more Type 96 guns. I swear, Japan, they ran out of metal to make butt plates for Osaka rifles, but somehow they had a secret stash of uh, Type 96. I guess they had the cheat code. They had the Game Genie code for infinite Type 96 guns, but nothing else besides that. Yeah. Anyway. And they would also, at least on some of the ships, have half of their torpedoes removed, and instead their depth charge capacity would be upgraded to 36. This obviously in more of an anti-submarine role. While they were an improvement, they did have some problems. For example, they had a problem with their rudder. The design was new, and whatnot, and it didn't work out great. Also, they went to a new stern setup where it was a transom, and it wasn't the greatest either. Yeah, you know, design experimenting and what have you. And it would take them a while to kind of address these issues. And more importantly, they were still vulnerable to aircraft, even though they stuck about a thousand Tech 96 guns on them. And even with all the depth charges, they were still vulnerable to uh, submarines. Probably one of the last things to point out for the Asasios, one of them would um, escort Yam excuse me, um, Yamoto during her final voyage in April of 1945, Operation Tingle. And, well, you know how that all went down for the Japanese Navy. But this is good for them because it was returned to form with the uh, special type destroyer, the heavily armed destroyer. And it was with these and others that they really started to earn a reputation for volley torpedo attacks. And... To be very skilled at night fighting. The Japanese Navy really worked on training their destroyer flotillas for uh, night operations, and in certain engagements, they really did get the better of Americans, even sometimes outnumbered. But they also used them rather aggressively and sometimes just threw them away for really no gain. And with that, we will move on to the Cager class. Cager class. In the first two we've looked at, they were both 1942, and they are both the lead ships of their class. But this is actually Isoke's, a member of the class, but not the lead ship. The first... 18 of the class were ordered in 1937 and they were yet another improvement on the Asashio class. They used the same basic hull, the same bridge, the same guns, the same torpedo. Now they were the first to be launched with the new Type 93 long lens and they would have other improvements to address stability issues and so on and so forth and they would be slightly longer and slightly wider and they were 
heavier to at about 2,500 tons in combat loadout. They would have the same torpedo armament. They would have two additional depth charges, so 18 instead of 16. And thanks to advancements in machinery and layout, they would have a top speed of 35 and a half knots instead of 35. They would also have a slightly larger crew, of about 250, give or take. They would originally have four Type 96 25mm anti-aircraft guns and no radar. So yeah, pretty similar, all things said. So they started to construct these in 1939. They were starting to be commissioned into the fleet. But then they would order four more. However, the class only had 19 members. So what happened? Why Why not 22? Did three get canceled? No. They would build one more, but the other three were a smoke screen to help hide the resources going into the construction of Yamato. Again, that was a battleship they were very much keeping under wraps. So they would build 19, as it were. And these would be used like every other ship in the Japanese Navy. They were, they were pretty much the same. And they would suffer pretty high attrition rate. By 1944, only 7 of the 19 would still be in service. They would get more anti-aircraft guns. Both more 13mm machine guns and 25mm guns. They would also start to receive radar in 1942. And as with the Asashios, they would sometimes pull off extra torpedoes and install more depth charges in their place, having as many as 36. Something else they would do, they would remove one of the turrets to make room for more anti-aircraft guns, at least on some of the ships. Now this model is dated 1945. And Isuke's here would go on Operation Tingo as well and be lost early on. Although, thankfully for her, most of her crew were evacuated, rescued, with a loss of life of only 20 25. Only one of these ships. Yuzi case would survive the war, so 18 out of 19 would not. Of those, 11 would be lost to submarine and air attack. 5 would be lost to surface action, so guns from other surface ships. 1 would be lost to a mine and the remaining two would be lost to kind of combination charge uh, things, including air attack. So again, we see how vulnerable the Japanese destroyer is to submarines, but especially to aircraft. Because even when they received radar, it was kind of behind the times radar. And even when they received more anti-aircraft guns, it was the Type 96. But Japan was able to learn. So that leads us to our final destroyer type. Alrighty, I finally get to talk about something a little different. The Okazugi class. What we've been looking at so far have all been special type destroyers, or type A. This was designed as a type B destroyer. And as designed, was to be an anti-aircraft destroyer, specifically. So these were to escort aircraft carriers and battleships to help protect them against, well, 
aircraft, with kind of a secondary role to protect against submarines. And plans dated back to 1939, and the first were laid down in 1941. Originally, they would order six, and this would be updated to 16. And the first would be completed and commissioned in June of 1942, right after the Battle of Midway. But because of how the war had been going and the general Japanese Navy, while they were initially designed as anti-aircraft destroyers, they were officially commissioned as just general purpose, general use, multi-role destroyers. So what do we have here? Well, we're over 50 feet longer than the preceding types at 440 feet. We're also a little bit wider at about 38 feet. Our standard weight is 2,700 tons, but fully loaded up and ready for war, they could jump up to as much as 3,700 tons. In 1942, as commissioned, Akazuki here had a crew of about 260, but throughout the war, that would increase to over 300. Because she was larger and meant for an escort role, she had a top speed of 33 knots, so she could keep up with battleships and carriers in the Imperial Navy. She has a very different main battery from the preceding classes, too. She has eight 4-inch true dual-purpose guns. They had good range, good accuracy, and were fast-firing. There were two per turret, with a total of four turrets. Two in the front, two in the back. These are actually very good, very good guns. Which is good because originally she would launch with four 25mm guns for air defense. So yeah, her main battery would be at work. She would also launch with a lot of depth charges though. Initially as much as 56 on board. And this would be the first destroyer class to launch from the get-go with an air search radar. Initially the Type 21. Now they would continue to order more of these. They would complete the first 16. Then they would order 16 more of a simplified design for wartime. And then eventually increase this to... 23, but this really never came to be. The final member of the class was commissioned into the fleet in January of 1945, so really would have been one of the last warships in the fleet at all. And they ended up not building more because of, well, resource availability or lack thereof. A handful of ships were scrapped while they were under construction, Others were just canceled before they were even laid down. And throughout the war, of course, they would be changed and updated as, as needed. For example, the last ones completed would have an updated air search radar, the Type 22. And also, as of 1944, they would start receiving a surface search radar, the Type 13. And their air defense would be improved. As many as 47 Type 25, excuse me, uh, 25 millimeter Type 96 guns would be on some ships. And they would put on two or three 13 millimeter machine guns. On other examples of the class, the depth charge armament would be increased to as much as 72 two <laughs> units so uh yeah 
quite a few depth charges and because of the longer hull they could carry even more of the highly ineffective 25 millimeter guns so they did uh, they did try to learn and they did use these in combat and of the 16 completed and in, in service six would actually finish the war I guess that's good I mean more than the others although a couple of them were only in service for a few months <laughs> so of these six two would just be scrapped and the four remaining examples would be given away as war reparations to uh, China the USA the UK and Russia so they would see some post-war service although more for just examining whatnot because they did have some advanced features the, the radar was nothing to write home about better to have it any type than none at all but American and British radar was far superior but the dual purpose guns were quite effective one thing to note originally these were not designed with torpedoes but the Japanese Admiralty insisted that a destroyer is not a destroyer without a torpedo. So, basically, one quad launcher, so four torpedo tubes, were kind of slammed into the design during the final stages of uh, construction and all that. And they would get a reload each. So, they would carry eight torpedoes. Far fewer than previous, but it made some in the Admiralty happy. I guess the alternative would have been eight more Type 96 guns, so... Eh. And these would be among the very last of the Japanese destroyer types. Again, they would have a simplified design based on this, but because it was adopted so late in the war... Yeah, I wouldn't get that far. And with that, we cover the four Japanese destroyers in the Eagle Moss 1 1100 scale die cast collection. As I said at the beginning, originally the Japanese Navy planned for 144 frontline modern destroyers in service. And to be fair, if you count what was available in 1941 and what was built in World War II, they did construct 132, although none were, they didn't ever have this many in service at one time. But still, they got close to the goal. They used them, sometimes to great effect. Again, they were great night fighters. They used their torpedo salvos, the type... 93 Long Lance was a very effective torpedo, and from the beginning, they were very insistent on a heavy torpedo loadout. They even took them up against much greater odds, battleships, cruisers, other destroyers, and sometimes would come out ahead. But especially after Midway, coming into 1943 and 44, and into 45 with Operation Tingo, they really just threw them away as cannon fodder, sometimes in ridiculous systems. Like I said, 31 were still afloat in August of 1945. Some were given away as reparations, others were considered just too far gone and scrapped. And, of course, they suffered from much of what all of the Japanese Navy suffered from towards the end of the war. But it's an interesting part, and destroyers definitely played a major role in the Imperial Navy, more so than maybe others. And much like with the aircraft carrier, Japan 
was one of the first to recognize what a destroyer could become and really set the trend for a modern destroyer. A World War I era destroyer was not the same thing. These were much more aggressive. And with that, we're really drawing to the end of the Eagle Moss collection looking at the Japanese Navy. So what do you think? I think they're neat little ships. But, obviously, because I have them. If you have any questions or comments, please do post them. And as always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. With that, I think I will let you go. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.